present to you the valedictorian and salutatorian for the class of 2011. Good morning. I hope you can hear both of us. <laughs> we would like to start by thanking the administrators, teachers, parents, and guests present this morning. It may sound cliche, but we really wouldn't be here without you. We would also like to thank Ms. Queen, Ms. Hester, Dr. Williams, and Ms. Williams for putting up with us as we put off writing this speech. Procrastination got us here somehow. Why stop now? <laughs> so you might be wondering why Alex and I are standing up here together. Well, you see, we thought that by combining our brilliant salutatorian and valedictorian minds, we would be able to come up with a speech that would be truly inspirational. Don't get your hopes up. <laughs> After probing our own minds, trying to think of some original idea, any original idea, we resorted to consulting one of our generation's most helpful archives of human knowledge. YouTube. <laughs> but unfortunately, the only advice we could find to share with you was Antoine Dotson's warning to hide your kids, hide your wife. <laughs> And so we were back to square one. So after several long meetings of getting almost nothing accomplished, we realized that we were not, in fact, the most well-equipped speech writers. Eventually, we found ourselves questioning why we were even being rewarded for all of our hard work in high school with even more work. But here we stand before you today to share this bonus assignment that nobody else had to do. <laughs> But in all honesty, we really are honored to stand up here this morning to represent Woodland's graduating class of 2011. It's crazy to imagine that after years of thinking this day would never come, we'll, we're all here to celebrate the time we've shared growing up together. This is the day that we've been anticipating practically our whole lives. This morning, we all woke up put on these lovely moo-moos that we call graduation robes, looked at ourselves in the mirror and thought, wow, I could look kind of ridiculous. We then managed to drag ourselves out here at 7.45 a.m., even though most of us haven't successfully been on time to first period all year, and file into our seats while listening to Pomp and Circumstance approximately 72 times. <laughs> We all did this with the same purpose and the same goal in mind. To walk across this stage, shake a hand, get our diploma, and make it back to our seats. And if we're lucky, we'll do all of this without tripping. And while this task may seem simple enough, we realize that it means much more than all of that. We realize that in that moment, right before we toss our hats, we are not only moving these funny little cat toys from one side to another, we are signifying the end of a huge part of our lives. And when we throw our caps up in the air, we will no longer be students of Woodland High School, but adult members of society, which I'm sure seems just as scary, if not scarier, to all of you parents than it does to us. <laughs> but our high school careers aren't the only things that will be ending this year. In fact, 2011 is a year of endings in many ways. After 25 years, Oprah Winfrey has announced the end of her show. <laughs> Steve Carell has left the office after seven seasons, which to me is kind of like losing my own father. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 will be released this summer, marking the final installment of one of the greatest masterpieces of all time. My life along with the lives of millions of other teenage girls, may as well have ended back in February when Justin Bieber publicly announced that he was dating Selena Gomez. And we all certainly got to witness the end of Charlie Sheen's career. And apparently, on top of all of that, the world is ending as well. You've probably seen it all over the news and on Facebook, but for those of you who might seem a little surprised, let us explain. I have to start with a short anecdote. Anna and I have, of course, been looking for inspiration for this speech over the past several weeks. I decided that the logical first course of action would be to listen to Kesha for 24 hours straight. Not that that's really any different from a normal day for me. 
So, after listening to her CD for almost as long as we listened to the band play the processional this morning, I was beginning to think she might have finally let me down. But then I had a dream. Kesha came up to me, covered in dirt and glitter, and she said, This place about to blow. <laughs> we'll never know exactly how Alex's brain works, but somehow this led to a revelation. Kesha's inspirational words reminded us of a story that helped us come up with a strange but appropriate topic for this speech. This past spring break, Alex and I took a school trip to Washington, D.C. While we were there, there was a religious group putting up posters around the city and handing out pamphlets saying that the world is going to end. I have one of these pamphlets with me, and the cover reads, Judgment Day, May 21st, 2011. As you may have noticed, that's today. <laughs> of course, when Alex told me of this news, I was really excited because my first thought was, hey, doesn't this mean we don't have to write our speech? <laughs> but from the looks of it, the world hasn't ended quite yet. So luckily we threw something together anyway. The idea of the end of the world has inspired several well-known works of literature. In the final lines of T.S. Eliot's poem, The Hollow Men, he writes, This is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends, not with a bang, but a whimper. I think that if we look at this statement, we can apply it to our own lives. We live for the bangs in life. None of us want to be remembered as a whimper. Let's take a moment to reminisce about some of the bangs we've had here at Woodland High School. There was the time the wildcat was stolen. The time we got a little too crunk at a pep rally. But it's all right. We all know that that spirit stick really belongs to us. There was the never-ending fire alarm during our changing of the guard. But in all honesty, Anna and I had trouble thinking of bangs that our senior class as a whole has shared. Our first thought was, well, Maybe there have been things that have happened, but we just didn't know about them because being the academically oriented students we are, we aren't always the first to hear about things. So we consulted several cool people, but they couldn't come up with anything either. <laughs> but it's okay. We don't need to share every memory. We each have our own things to remember. As we recall our own little memories, we realize that no matter what our high school experience has been, it has made a huge impact on each of our individual lives. And even though our time here is coming to a close, we will never forget the experiences that we've shared. So whether you're sitting there thinking about how much you're going to miss the people around you, or you're thinking how ready you are to move on, we all walked through these halls and we will always share that. So let today be a day to make one last memory with the people around you. It's easy to anticipate the future and act like we're ready for the next chapter of our lives. But don't forget that this morning is the last time we will be gathered together here as a class. In fact, according to this pamphlet, this is the last time we'll be gathered together at all. <laughs> but in all seriousness, the world is not going to end today which we can say with a high level of confidence, because if we're wrong, there's really no way for you to nag us about it. So although today today may not be the end of the world, in a way, it is the end of the world that we have known for all of our lives. High school is over, we're moving out, leaving our parents, going to college or joining the military, and leading our own lives. It seemed like the life that we've had is the only life we would ever know. But we soon found out that there was much more to come. We've learned to separate life into three sections. There's everything that has led up to this day. There's everything that will follow this day. And there is right now. But sometimes right now seems so short and insignificant when compared to the past and the future that we just overlook it. It's easy to remember the bangs. And it's easy to tell yourself that there are going to be bangs in the future. What's hard is to live right now in a way that will allow the memorable moments to come. Because nothing is ever going to happen <coughs> if you don't let something happen now. When we were little, everything happened in the right now stage. 